so I'm going to call the meeting to order. This is the uh, January 16th, 2018 Planning Board meeting. My name is Kathy Barnard. I'm the chairman of the Planning Board. And let me introduce the other members to, uh, way down uh, to my, my right, uh, Paul O'Brien. Next to Paul, uh, John Thurston, Mike Cotter. And then to my left, Peter Goodwin and uh, Brad Harriman, who's the representative from the uh, Board of Selectmen, uh, Matt Sullivan, the uh, uh, Planning and Development Director for, for the town. Uh, we have a, a few continued uh, public hearings. Is Leanne coming? She should be here, but uh, we'll have yes. a tape just in case. Yes, she should be here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let me um, start off at the top of the agenda here. Uh, the first item is public comments, if any, anyone, Mary or Suzanne, if you want to uh, make any comments, or if you're here for specific items, that's great. Uh, so we will uh, move on from that. Uh, the minutes from January 2nd, uh, 2018, does anyone have any issues with the minutes? Uh, if not, I'd entertain a, a motion to approve the January 2nd, 2018 minutes. So moved. Thank you. Motion has been made and a second. Seconded. And seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, opposed and uh, two abstentions. Aye, Leanne. Okay, uh, two abstentions from the minutes, which we just approved, please, Ann. Okay, the uh, next item are uh, three continued public hearings. These were continued from December 19th, uh, 2017. Uh, first one is uh, an amendment to section 175-27 uh, point six dash twelve. This is the steep slope protection district. Uh, the next one, uh, some amendments to section one seventy five dash forty four. This is our sign ordinance, and uh, as we get into these, Matt is going to explain uh, the issues relating to them. The third one, one seventy five dash sixty seven. Uh, shorefront residential district, some minor changes to uh, that section of the zoning ordinance. So uh, I'll turn this over to uh, Matt. Matt, if you want to go through the issues. Sure. Um, Madam Chairman, point of order. Yes, um, <clears throat> beg pardon. On my copy of the proposed ordinance, the uh, the number is 17527.7 on the um, public hearings agenda, it's 127.612, which is correct? Yeah. The correct number is, uh, give me one second here, should be 175.27.7. Yep, thank you. Okay. <coughs> okay, uh, thank you. And when we get to the um, cyanide uh, ordinance, Mr. Harriman is going to recuse himself. I will recuse myself from Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, go ahead, Matt. Um, again, this is a continuation of the public hearing on the steep slopes ordinance to start off. Um, the board at the prior public hearing discussed adding, adding the language here, a cumulative uh, prior to the words 20,000 square feet. So the complete warrant article, sorry, warrant uh, language would be under the applicability section. This article shall apply to all areas where the proposed site disturbance of slopes 15% or greater is greater than a cumulative 20,000 square feet as shown by a site-specific topographical survey. And then under the site disturbance definition, which is a different section, that's under 175.27.12. Uh, we've added language here, and the full definition reads, any activity that removes the vegetative cover from the land surface or includes excavation of earth. Uh, so again, that language, a cumulative, was added uh, to the applicability section. That's why we continue the public hearing. 
Okay, wh why don't we go through all three and then uh, take any public comments. Okay. Moving on to the modifications to the sign ordinance. Um, uh, I think your packets are a little bit out of order. I, I believe you have the shorefront residential next, but I'll go to the sign ordinance first. Uh, we did review this at the last meeting, uh, item by item, and the board has been working on this throughout the year uh, to remove all content-based regulation in accordance with uh, the federal case uh, Reed versus Gilbert. So the majority of the modifications within the sign ordinance as posted online uh, and available here relate to that decision. However, there are some additional amendments, and for that reason, I'd like to quickly read the public notice language that went out. So this is actually what went out to the newspaper, and I think this summarizes the changes uh, quite comprehensively. And this reads, amend the sign ordinance to remove content-based regulation except for certain types of commercial si signage pursuant to recent federal court decisions. To include in the purpose section the safety of the traveling public, require full cutoff shielding for all lighting, to prohibit uplighting, to allow wall signs in the VR, R, GR, SFR, RR, and MW districts, to replace residential accessory with residential home occupation, to allow one square foot of wall and freestanding signs in the VR, R, GR, SFR, RR, and MW districts, to allow one square foot of freestanding signs in the rural ag and agricultural districts, and to add devices such as harpoon type pole signs and banners to the definition of signs, and to add the SFR, SWLBD, ESLBD and WFLBD and C2 zoning districts to the table one types of signs permitted by district for each business, regulating signs in those respective districts as indicated in the table. That's quite, uh, quite a lot of language there, obviously, but I just wanted to look at a couple of specific changes. A lot of those zone names that I mentioned refer specifically to the, some modifications in the table. We hadn't included all of the zones in our permission table and our dimension table. We've actually modified that to make sure that those are all reflected there. So that's why there's a lot of that language in the public notice language. Um, further, uh, moving on to here, the, again, the permitted versus not permitted in dimension table, more modifications, and you'll see that residential home accessory versus home occupation change noted here as well. And then you may have heard within this that we are adding some language related to sign lighting. This language is actually in another section of the ordinance. It's still applied to signs, but the concern was that if someone picked up the sign ordinance, they wouldn't be immediately aware that there were lighting provisions referring to their sign uh, permit or the permit application. Uh, and additionally, one item I think the board may want to discuss further tonight, uh, the addition of language to the sign definition referring specifically to har harpoon type pole signs. Uh, and the way this reads now, which is in the definition section, uh, it adds on to the uh, existing definition of sign, devices such as harpoon type pole signs and banners are considered to be signs, making it very clear that any harpoon type pole sign or banner that includes um, content or text that we're, we're really referring to would be considered to be a sign and would qualify as one of the allowable signs per the sign ordinance. Uh, it is not an additional uh, type of signage that is exempt in some way. Um, so those, I, th I think that's a, a good summarization of what's happening here with the sign ordinance. And I would just start, sort of close this by saying that although it appears that we've added language here in a lot of places, there is no place in, the si in these sign ordinance amendments that further restricts anything. It's actually quite the opposite. Uh, in some areas, we've added clarification where there was contradiction before that makes it very clear that there are signs that are permitted in certain districts. Um, that weren't necessarily permitted for, and those are the smaller um, signs in some of the rural districts. Um, if you'd like, I'll move on to the shorefront residential districts. Uh, I discussed this change at a prior meeting. Uh, this change is per Senate Bill 30, uh, and what ultimately became a change to the Shoreland Water Quality Protection Act, 483B. Um, the legislature amended the size of the grid segments for uh, the waterfront buffer grid. Uh, from 50 by 50 feet to 50 or 25 by 50 feet. And specifically, and the reason for the continuation of this public hearing, um, they've made it very clear that the 25 feet is measured along the reference line rather than measured uh, from, as a depth of the lot. The 25 feet is measured in shorefront. So uh, we included some di additional language in the proposed ordinance changes that reflects that. Uh, and I believe that's indicated on page five, uh, simply reading under C2. 25 feet being measured along the reference line to clarify that issue that we had before. Um, so I think that covers all of the proposed three ordinance amendments as discussed at the last public hearing. 
uh, and amended for this public hearing this evening. Okay, thank you. Hey, um, anyone men want to make uh, some comments about these proposed amendment changes? Digesting. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if I, could you put the uh, screen back up on the sign ordinance? Sure. So if I understand it correctly, you're adding um, about the harpoon signs, you're adding that to a definition? That's correct. Um, yes. Well, first of all, I'm here to say that I would hope that you don't even put it in your ordinance, that you strike it. And um, the reason I, I say that, well, first of all, I'd ask a question. What public outcry has this board had to amend your ordinance to ask to have harpoon signs in the certain districts in Wolfboro? There, what public know. pressure has there been to the board? Uh, okay, none that I am aware of. But none that I'm aware of. No, I, and I don't. Uh, this this change doesn't add harpoon signs as a permitted sign. It, it doesn't change where those would be allowed at all. This simply says that a harpoon sign is a freestanding sign. So in the past, the argument. What I can say is the argument has been from from um, some folks with these signs that. It's in fact not a sign and not an advertisement device. The zoning board, in one case at least, and the planning department as a whole has said no, if you have content on the harpoon sign, it is a sign and therefore it has to be A, allowed as a freestanding sign in your zoning district and it has to meet the dimensional requirements. So by adding it into the sign definition as a type of sign, it doesn't change at all where it would be or would not be permitted. There's no change there. Well, I tend to disagree. <coughs> um, <clears throat> this is permissive zoning. Once you start mentioning it in the definition, you're saying it's allowed. Where it's not in the definition, you would, uh, you would therefore say it's not allowed because it's, as I said, permissive zoning. What it further does is it <clears throat> allows for harpoon signs in various ways in that it could be used as a temporary sign. Um, if you go through the ordinance, um, placement of signs, signs shall be permitted within setback area provided that doesn't cause a safety hazard. So if you are allowing a temporary sign for um, if I had a wallpaper store and I am having a, a sale on wallpaper, I can put up a temporary harpoon sign in the proper setback easement area for 30 days. Um, also, you, and that could happen various and sundry times throughout the town within the bis business district or on Route 28. Um, if if um, a person wanted to reduce the size of their permanent sign for some reason, um, they could make up that square footage in a harpoon sign. And harpoon signs come in all sizes, shapes, and colors. Um, and the, some are stuck into the ground, some are stuck into uh, a snow banking. Um, I just don't see the need to add to the clutter in on Route 28 or downtown <clears throat> with harpoon signs waving in the air. I, I just today came back from Conway. I didn't see in the town of downtown Conway anything that would be an affront to the lovely community that it is. Only when I got into 
um, near Ossipi, I forget what town it is, they had some harpoon signs. Tamworth. Tamworth, yeah. yeah. Right, I, yes, I saw that one. And um, they're not very pleasant. Um, when you look at your ordinance I, under... Can I ask a question? I don't have a page German? number here, Can I ask a question? Uh, you want her to finish? Yeah, I, I just want to ask her a question. Oh, okay, go, go ahead. Zan, so is, is, I'm just having uh, difficulty following the argument. Is your, your argument is we should be silent on harpoon signs? Yes. And, and ergo, they're not, they're not in, they're not out. They're not, they're not in because you didn't allow them. Your zoning allows uses. We don't have zoning that says you can't do this and you can't do that and you can't do something else. Okay. Thank you. Excuse me, Matt, could you perhaps explain the Supreme Court decision and how it affects harpoon signs with text? whether or not they're permitted well, or not permitted by a local ordinance? Well, I would, I'd, um, before I address that, I think the challenge relative to Suzanne's point is that I have a hard time ar making the argument that a harpoon sign is not a freestanding sign. On a what? Freestanding sign. And the, the ordinance does allow freestanding signs. That's right. Right. So if a harpoon sign is a freestanding sign, if a business is entitled to a freestanding sign and they choose to use a harpoon sign, I think that's a reasonable sign design. So I think the fact that the ordinance doesn't say anything about harpoon signs does not mean that it's not permitted. I, I think it's a, I think it's, it, it fits into the category of freestanding sign. Does that make sense to the board? Yes. I, I think it, it would be hard for me to say to somebody, you're allowed to have a freestanding sign in this zoning district, but you cannot have this specific design of freestanding sign being a harpoon or feather flag sign. So I think, I think that they are allowed as the ordinance I, I have to disagree with you because we say you can have a banner, you can have a bunting, you can have a flag. We've listed out some types of items you can have as freestanding signs or signs. By including this, you are permitting it. By excluding it and not even bringing it up, it's not allowed. It would have to either go for a variance or... Um, um, it just, it just wouldn't even, it wouldn't fly. I think you're just headed down the wrong path, and I think the part of your problem is that you're well, caught up in no, that. No, uh, uh, we need to focus on what's being proposed. Well, I am. The, uh, Thank the, you. The, the first meeting that I was at at your public hearing, Matt had suggested that there was an issue with a harpoon sign. And therefore, that's part of the reason you should go forward and adopt something for a harpoon sign. I would say that that <clears throat> decision to appeal the, the uh, code offices not allowing it was upheld by the ZBA. And further, the applicant was told, you need to get a handle on what the ordinance says, which is you can have a temporary 30-day sign. And so that issue was resolved. And I think because of one issue, we shouldn't, we're just going to clutter up the town. I mean, 28, you all want to see expanded up 28. You want to see more businesses downtown. Are we that hungry for business that we need harpoon signs? I don't think so. I don't think, you know, you see the desperate businesses with the signs and more signs and more signs and change of signs and change of color and change of wording and do this and do that because they're trying to draw in business. I don't think Wolfboro is that hot up for business and their shops are that hot up that they need harpoon signs. Okay. And, and, and you'll be allowing them as free, you're allowing them on, on um, it could be a portable sign, it could f f fall under a portable sign. It could fall under um, a roof sign. You could put it on the, sorry. You could put it on a roof. Did, did, I think you need to really think about this before you go forward. I'd like to give you some pictures, if I may. I didn't make for everybody, but. Oh, okay. Okay, sure. We can say a lot of different things on them, and we can't edit, <laughs> you know, what people say. But there's one for beer. There's one for cigarettes. There's one that's not in good repair. Uh, 
And then here we have one on our roof here in town. And I don't believe it's grandfather, which can be seen from I really don't think you're doing a service to the town by allowing them. I would really request you please put this on the back burner for another year and just strike, strike that wording. I don't know how, I don't have a copy of what Matt had, but um, in the one that I had before it says devices such as harpoon type signs and banners are considered to be signs. Well, you already have over under flags, you have something that comes pretty close. You could just insert the word banner because you have uh, flags and buntings. Just put the word banner in there and please just strike our poem signs. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Hey, Mary. Hi. I just have a couple questions. Okay. You so probably better identify yourself. Mary DeVries, and I have questions. I'll start on sort of page one. And you're on the sign? Signs. I'm sorry, okay. Kathy. Yes, uh, Madam Chairman. On the signs, <coughs> under A, on the first page in the uh, proposed changes, the addition would be safety of the traveling public. And is that for some specific, is there a specific example of why that addition was put in? The, I, the, I admit I missed that earlier, so. That's I okay, and, yeah. and it's sort of an odd addition. Um, council actually recommended this because they felt that our sign ordinance just generally should have a clear connection to the safety of the traveling public. Um, they felt that that was an important addition to the purpose statement, um, and it was really a general addition when they were reviewing it for those content-based items, they said this is really important to have in there. There should be a direct connection to public health, safety, and welfare. So that's why that language was added. Thank you. And on page two, about the lighting, is it A, both A and B that are being placed in the proposed changes here that were they were both already existing in the That's ordinance correct. elsewhere, just as it's written, as exactly. proposed. Exactly. exactly. Yep. And what else did I have? Ah, I missed my place. Well, I guess I'll, I'll skip forward and I might go back. Uh, but regarding the signs and the addition of uh, devices such as harpoon type pole signs and banners are considered to be signs, do I understand correctly that is um, really in response to we do have businesses in, in the community who are interested in using those in the future and this may, will keep them under compliance just as any other type of sign in the, um, that a business is allowed to have up. Yes, I think it, my feeling is that it makes it clear that while it's not specifically listed within the sign ordinances as a maybe design, it is a sign and therefore it has to meet the dimensional standards and it has to be permitted in that zone. Makes sense. Um, and then just back, I think, to the safety of the traveling public, that one on the first page. I Just a question about uh, the wording that already existed. So if you'll bear with me, it's not to any proposed changes in that uh, A. But it says uniform in the second sentence starts out with, it is the purpose and intent, and then later in that sentence it says, with aesthetic values as called for in the master plan. So it's possible that this is revisited after the master plan update that is going to happen shortly. Well, it's, it was mentioned in the previous master plan. 
I think is what that refers to. Yeah, Mary, are you asking if this would be, if the sign ordinance directly would be revisited after the master plan? Well, it's referred to, to the master plan in mm -hmm. this particular area. Mm -hmm. Right. So yep. I don't know, and maybe I should know, but where, you know, did that wording only start in 2007 was it added? And I, and I did not look back at that right. before yeah. tonight. No, but I, I know that it was that there, there was some comments about signage in the 2007, but I'm not, not sure. I can't remember, even though you did give us the 1996. I did. Yes. <laughs> I can't remember if they mentioned it. Yeah, uh, I didn't, like I said, I didn't look uh, back either before but, but tonight. But they could very well have, because this is kind of a, uh, you know, I think the type of thing that communities sort of look to. Makes sense, yeah. Aesthetic uh, using sign or signs. Okay. And then I was uh, just want to reiterate what um, Mr. Sullivan said earlier that no changes or proposed changes to the sign ordinance place uh, further restrictions on signage. That's and, and we have asked that. And I'm just asking yeah, questions yeah. Well, that I no, expect no, to be I, asked I've so asked I can the, be informed. The same, same questions and, and other members have also. And we have been told that no, no, it doesn't. And it doesn't seem to in my reading of this. No. No, I, I mean. I guess that was why I was asking about an example of the public safety, that part. So I understand and of course respect that if it come, uh, Council has recommended that change, but is it possible that's impact going to impact existing signage for businesses? Right. Well, just, just, just so a, we're informed. Just as a for instance, uh, the last time that we amended the sign ordinance back several years ago, I remember when the room was full. Yes. Uh, and we put in the decorative sign, uh, flags, and that has now been uh, deleted. But, uh, and I've talked to Matt about it probably two or three times <laughs> because that, that was a very important to people to be able to have those decorative flags. And so uh, deleting it from the list of signs that are exempt, Matt has reassured me that it does not affect anything uh, as far as flags. And the reason for that is- Even if they have a coffee cup and a ice cream cone on them. Yeah, the, the reason for that is, and this is, it gets a little complicated, I guess. The reason removing an exemption is not a bad thing is because the flag definition references only signs that do one of a couple things. They show pictures or they have an open sign. That's it. So if you are to put a flag up that says El Centenario, that is considered, that is considered a, a sign, and it always has been. So for mm -hmm. that reason, the exemption does not impact decorative flags because decorative flags are still allowed. Um, I just looked through again. I see nothing that impacts, nothing that is more restrictive than the ordinance as it existed before. Um, com some commercial regulation remains in place uh, where we've removed the residential side of things or non-commercial side of things. And then in the sign tables, we have, uh, in a couple, in two instances, we removed not permitted and added a dimensional requirement to allow for a certain type of sign. Yeah, I saw that. And then we changed out home occupation for um, accessory occupation, residential accessory signage. So I can't see any way why this would be more restrictive. Now, that's, I guess that's my final okay. answer. Yeah, I, I can't see any way how it could be. That's all I had. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, so, uh, just not, not to be, uh, not to carry this one too far. And I know it's hard to see, but you can see the words open. Yep. That's on a pendant. Mm -hmm. It's also on something that you'd call a um, a what? A harpoon sign. That is not, but that, under the ordinance, that is not a sign. And I know that that gets confusing when we're adding in that specific language, but 
So is it possible that if somebody were to, and, I, and I've, I've, up until just recently, I've always, viewing public, it's a, uh, I have a photograph of a pendant here, I've always known them to be pendants. That's in, in nomenclature, that's what I was taught. So, and we've now made them, call, we call them harpoons. But if we put a can of, uh, a can of beer on it, said open, an ice cream cone. Wouldn't be a sign. Would not be a sign. Correct. Okay, thank you. That would not be a sign. Would not be a sign. The one I like, right? It's counterintuitive. Isn't it? I think if you go back to flag, you have any fabric, bunting, mm -hmm. decorative color, patent symbols, the word open, and a graphic of a picture of one's product for sale, such as ice cream, coffee, are permitted on a decorative flag. So I can't see that that wouldn't be permitted on a harpoon sign. I agree. That's why I'm, that's why I'm, saying, that's why I'm saying that that with a beer, a a beer and an open sign on it would not be considered to me a freestanding sign. It wouldn't be. It would be considered a flag. A pendant of some sort, or a flag. And therefore be exempt. Okay. But if you were to put a, and we're really getting into it here, but if, if you were to put a beer can, mm -hmm. let's put open on there as well, and then a business name or some sort of advertisement for the business, that would be a sign. Okay. Why but, would you have to put the name of your business? Because you, you're not saying that here. Right. You're saying that the word open and graphic picture of one's product for mm -hmm. sale, such as an ice cream or coffee, are primitive decorative flags. That right. would apply to a harpoon sign as well. Correct. Would it not? But decorative flags are not contemplated as signs in this ordinance. They, they aren't. That's, a that's decorative what, flag is, saying. you're saying, is not a sign? No, that's, what, that's, that, I, that's not part of the calculation of a sign? No. So if somebody puts a fl an open well, then, flag then out, it, that, is it, not a, that is not counted as one of their signs. Then the, pen, the uh, pendant, or whatever you call it, or the uh, harpoon, uh, you're going to say that's not a sign, and they're allowed to stick those in the ground because it's not a sign, because it's got the word and a beer can on it? It's not a sign. Well, I, I was inflammatory with the with the beer can. If we had a cup of coffee on a on a on a whatever, it's not a sign. It just says this is what we do. If we had a cup of coffee and it said we're open for business nine to five, uh, seven days a week, uh, that could be constituted as a business sign. And I think the intention here is we we want the town to be. We want town businesses to be able to put a cup of coffee on a, on a whatever we want to call that um, and let them do that, right? Isn't that what we want? But if, we, but if, but if somebody says, hey, 10% uh, uh, off, 30% off, 50% off, come on in now, get in here fast, telephone number, zip code, all that kind of stuff, that's an advertising, that's a sign. And we would probably want to say, you know what, you can only have a certain amount of those. Is that what we're saying? Well, look at your sign definition. An exterior device, picture, mm -hmm. so forth, mm -hmm. graphic colors, uh, symbols, writing, to advertise, announce the purpose of, or identify the purpose of any person, entity, or to communicate product or service information to the public. And he, and he did have the addition right there of devices such as harpoon signs. So he was saying it's a sign. I don't think that's the kind of sign. I'll go back to it. I'll say it for the last time. I don't think it's the kind of sign that Wolfboro needs or deserves. They clutter up the uh, aesthetics. Uh, and when you read what the, the purpose of signs are, is the uh, uniformity and aesthetic value that certainly doesn't add to the aesthetic value um, and the general welfare of the town. Um, they're not aesthetic. It does, I don't feel it adds any value. And I would really hope that you would just delete it, chew on it for another year, and then see, see what you think about it. There's no emergency to include this in the, in the zoning ordinance at this time. OK. Thank thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, Suzanne. Okay, uh, 
close the uh, public hearing. Um, planning board members, comments, or um, do you want to do you want to uh, go ahead and uh, talk about them individually? Now, why don't we talk about the steep slopes mm -hmm. first? Uh, can anybody have any issues? None whatsoever. I think this one is perfectly fine. Okay. Okay. Wait, do you want to? You want to disposition them right now, Kathy, or? Uh, yes, why, why don't we do the steep slopes? Uh, and uh, Leanne, what's our wording? Yeah, what's the wording? <laughs> um, move to move more 2008 and go 2008 more. Move. Yes, move the. Um, you, you, as proposed. You do want to recommend, too, specifically, because that recommend language appears in the warrant articles right next to the warrant language. So I think the I, board I move the recommend. board recommend. The, <clears throat> beg pardon, the revision of the steep slopes ordinance 175 hyphen 27.7 to the 2018 warrant. Thank you. Okay. Somebody want to second that? <coughs> Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Steep slopes. Um, how about the uh, shorefront residential district? Uh, that these proposals are basically to bring us into conformance with the state uh, regulations that are in effect. Correct. Is that right? Yep. Absolutely correct. Okay. So, Matt, you can you can uh, assure the board that the changes <clears throat> that you have proposed in the shorefront residential district, uh, Article Nine amendment or changes to the ordinance, are as proposed by DES in the new. Shoreland Protection Act, or whatever they call it nowadays? Yes, I can. Okay, thank you. Okay. I'm prepared to move this one to warrant to if. if oh, yeah. Okay, if you do. Recommend it move to be warrant to warrant 2018. All right. Something to that effect. Beg okay, pardon. motion has been made. Somebody Second. and seconded. Uh, all in favor of moving the Shorefront Residential District uh, proposed amendments to the 20. 2018 warrant, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, signs. Uh, we did have a discussion at, at our uh, last meeting about, surprisingly, the harpoon signs. And um, so I, I think, uh, John, you, you had. Uh, uh, said, well, according to the minutes, that we should wait for the public hearing, get any public comments, and then make a determination. Yes, that's correct, Kathy. Thank you. Uh, we, we had the discussion there about the harpoon feather flags and how they fit into the town and how they uh, kept with the character of the town and, and if they would be unsightly and, and how they represent us as a town, myself, growing up here, I don't see them being a benefit for our town, and uh, I would rather see them not be included in anything. And and so you would propose taking uh, out the the wording about harpoon signs from the definite the definition of sign. Yes. Okay. Devices such as harpoon type pole signs and banners are considered to be signs. Any other uh, comments? Um, I believe that the discussion also looked at the idea that the difference between a harpoon sign and a flag is uh, that one has a flagpole which is curved and one has a flagpole which is straight. The advantage of the curved pole ends up being that the flag is always taut as compared to needing to have the flag blowing in the wind or calm and therefore hanging straight down. So to make a differentiation between a harpoon sign, which is a flag, and a regular flag, which is allowed, is, I believe, uh, not really along the lines of what we should be doing. The, the material, is a fabric on both cases. It has to do with the shape of the pole. 
Uh, I'd like to add to that. Uh, I think what you're trying to describe is a banner, because by, by what I notice, banner has a pole and another pole, and this canvas thing is held up on both sides, whether or not it's pipes or wood or whatever. A, a feather flag is held and flaps in the air. It, it can't have a business name on it because then it will be a business sign, but you could have sale and that wouldn't fall under any category. It would just be a random sign. Right. Uh, yeah. but, the, but the difference between a banner held by two posts, a flag held by one post, and a harpoon sign held by a curved flag is not really, uh, there, there's no difference. The harpoon <coughs> sign ends up, or the, the banner ends up being something which is held taut because there are two poles, the harpoon sign ends up being held taut because it has a curved pole. So we're Matt, did you want to, want to say something before? Or? Uh, no, I was just going to add that the discussion at the last meeting, I think John may have been about to say this, the discussion at the last meeting was actually to add language too that said prohibit, to actually add language into the sign uh, the sign definition that said harpoon style signs shall be prohibited. So that was also discussed at the last mm -hmm. meeting as an alternative to make it very clear because again, if, if you ask me my interpretation today, my interpretation is a harpoon, a harpoon type sign would qualify as a freestanding sign. I, I think that the ordinance allows for those in certain zoning districts. So the only way to, to prohibit that is to add language that specifically says this type of sign is prohibited under the ordinance. Kathy? Yep. Could I ask a question? P Peter, you and John agreeing, I'm, I'm having trouble following the logic. We, we disagree. You disagree? We disagree completely. Okay. And uh, this was a discussion that Vaughn and I had. We were on the same side. Yeah. Um, he says you should not have harpoon signs allowed. Mm -hmm. And I say that the difference between a flag, a banner, and a harpoon is a matter of construction. It's the pole. It's, it's a pole, yeah. which is a flagpole. It happens to be a bent flagpole. I'm just, I'm just, the yeah. only difference which occurs with a harpoon sign. Most, most of the harpoon and feather flags are 10 feet tall. Most of them that I've been looking at here, they are, they're all extremely tall. They're uh, 18 inches to two feet wide. Uh, they, you know, they, they flutter in the wind. Yeah, they, again, they, there's certain things that they can have on them, but there's certain things that they can have on them. They can have now hiring. But they I could have could, sale. They could, I could put up two poles with a banner and it would be, according to your definition, okay. Yeah. I think that falls onto the banner that you look That's at. And I think, I think, so you, I think there's a distinction between the two. Okay. Does, does anybody have any comments about, I mean, this is being added to the sign definition, and it seems that our sign definition that now presently exists in the ordinance is just fine without adding uh, the underlying words, which are devices such as harpoon type pole signs and banners are considered to be signs. I, I don't think that adds anything to the definition, and I don't really see why it needs to be in there. Can I ask a question of the planner? If that language was not in the ordinance, <coughs> would harpoon signs be prohibited? No. Nor would they be permitted. Why would they be permitted? Nor would they be permitted. Right. Again, my... It would be done by special exception. My feeling is that a harpoon style sign is a freestanding sign. And, and freestanding signs are allowed. And the reason, the reason I say that is because if somebody submits a sign permit application mm. for a specific design of a freestanding sign that is different than what we normally contemplate as sort of a two-sided, two-poled, mm. freestanding sign, mm -hmm. I can't really judge the proposal based on the shape necessarily as long as it meets the dimensional requirements. That's not, that's not specified within the zoning ordinances that exist today. So if somebody comes in with a harpoon sign, my judgment would be that that is a freestanding sign, despite its strange design, unless you specifically say in here that it is not a freestanding sign, 
I think that the ordinance provides for it to be one. Okay, well, why did you put it under the definition of sign if it's a freestanding sign? Mm -hmm. This addition was added by a member of the board during a discussion after mm -hmm. which I had actually proposed adding prohibit language here. And then the board spoke and said, I'm not sure we want to prohibit harpoon signs. We simply want to make them a sign. So this language was actually added by the board. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I'm not sure it's appropriate in this location. I, I think it would be a good idea if we simply struck this language. I share Suzanne's concern. I share John's concern. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've got a frog in my throat. Um, there's a, I'm, I'm worried about blight in the town, and these signs are blightish, if you know what I mean. I think we should revisit this ordinance, mm -hmm. specifically considering harpoon signs and maybe even thinking about prohibiting them in the town. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. I don't think the wording really... Uh, helps anybody with uh, it, resolve anything. Go ahead, Paul. And and I I apologize. I'm not as studied as you you folks are, and I wasn't here for the last meeting. But it seems, and I'm not being disrespectful. It seems that we're getting down to the pole and and the crook on the pole. And I think that um, I think that we're we're into a we're in a murky area here. Um, and. And what I would, if, first of all, I think that if a business wants to uh, promote their business, I think the rules are pretty clear about how many square footage of promotional space they're given. And, and I think you've done a great job cleaning up the, mm -hmm. you know, what zones this stuff should be in and how big the signs can be and whether they're lighted or not. I think that's good. I think we, we could be getting ourselves into uh, into an area that we, we might not want to get into by trying to figure out or anticipate these freestanding things that people might plunk on the ground. And I personally don't like seeing freestanding things flopping. I don't like them. I, I don't. I think they're whatever they are. I would argue that those, those things are special exception requests. And, um, and, you know, and, and maybe when we revisit it, we, we think about the fact that we can't regulate everything down to the, you know, to the to the nub. Some of these things we're going to have to use judgment. And some of these we're going to have to, you know, maybe uh, ask our colleagues at the ZBA to, to deal with and be done with it. <coughs> I don't think we can regulate everything. I think, John, Paul, if, if if I may, asking the ZBA to to essentially pick up the task the planning board ought to be exercising itself is a bit of a cumbersome process. I think that in, <clears throat> in, in this particular case, we've had two public hearings on the sign ordinance proposal now, mm -hmm. and the only comment we've heard from the public at all has been opposition to right. these do kinds it. of signs. Yeah. So right. I think we really need to hear from the public, listen to what they had to say, and move on accordingly. Yeah, okay. I, I think you and I agree on that. Okay. But maybe so the preamble we don't, but you know, you and I agree on that. So. Um, Mike, would you be willing to make a, a motion to uh, delete the underlined wording in the sign definition? I'd be happy to make that motion, Kathy. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so moved. Okay. Seconded. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor of um, uh, deleting the underlined wording, which uh, says devices such as harpoon type pole signs and banners are considered to be signs, deleting that wording uh, from the definition of sign in the sign ordinance. And all, uh, yes, all in favor of deleting that. Aye. 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 Okay. okay. And all in favor of keeping it, no. the wording in, please say. Aye. Aye. Okay. And the Even reason I no. say that is that I look at a sign, there is a harpoon sign, here is a harpoon sign, and they put an extra side <coughs> down. Um, I do not think it should be taken out. I will go with the rest of the board saying we should investigate this further um, and, and bring it up at a later date. But I, I think that the definition is problematic. 
and it is something that we should look at in the future. I completely agree with you on that. We do okay. need to Thank consider you, this further. Okay. okay. Madam Chair, may I ask one question? I was not here at the last meeting. Did the board discuss the language included in C1 and decide that it was to be agreeable or not? I, I made an argument here that although it's very complicated the way it's been written by council, I think that what we sometimes lose sight of is that the primary consumer of the ordinance in most cases is the planning staff because we are really the people who speak to the public about the ordinance and help them understand it. So I think it's pretty cumbersome language that's being used here, but I think it's understandable to staff and it's pretty darn specific. So I think it's, I think it's appropriate to keep it in there. Do I think the average reader will understand? Maybe not, but I hope that they'll ask us questions if they don't. I have no problem with the language. It makes perfect sense to me. I'm just wondering whether the board actually voted on including it, or are we doing that tonight? I don't or think the board We didn't vote. We discussed, didn't vote yeah. or we discussed the board it. Not. Voted. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yes. And so it stays in as, yeah. okay. as a represented. Okay. Yeah. okay, so with that um, uh, deletion, from the sign definition, uh, would someone then be willing to make a motion to uh, uh, have this uh, go on the town warrant, the 2018 town warrant? I would recommend that we vote to include this on the town warrant and recommend that it pass. Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, okay, and, and Brad, uh, Brad Harriman is abstaining. Okay. Good. All right. Very good. Thank you, folks. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> Thank you, Suzanne and Mary, for your comments. Okay. Uh, let's see. The next item just talks about communications, and which is the meeting memo and the TRC minutes, and then the next item is our unfinished business, which is the master plan, and good evening, Steve. Nice to see you. Uh, yeah, it would, it, it would be nice. Stay. You want to stay? Yeah. yeah okay. We're right. here. Uh, okay. I'm comfy. Okay. All right. Uh, they're comfy. Up on the chair. We done with regular business? We don't what? I'm just talking to myself. Okay. All right.